Hi, I'm Chris from Green Our Planet. Welcome to our tutorial on sprouting seeds for your hydroponic system. We recommend that you grow seeds into seedlings before you place them in your systems. Here's how to get that started. The materials you will need for this are a seed sprouting tray with a clear cover, water or nutrient solution, rock wool planting plugs, scissors, seeds, sticks or row markers. received a Super Sprouter Seed Germination Kit. The kit contains a tray, a humidity dome, and a T5 grow light. This is where you will start your seeds and where they'll spend their first week or two as they grow into seedlings that can go into your hydroponic systems. You also received 200 rock wool planting plugs. These plugs are made of volcanic rock that is superheated and spun into a fibrous substance that is inert and absorbs a lot of water. It will serve as the place for your seedlings to anchor themselves and begin their development. The seedlings will stay in their planting plugs all through the life cycle as the separated plugs fit nicely into all of the systems. There are other types of planting plugs that can be used in hydroponics as well, including coco coir and peat moss plugs. Feel free to experiment with different types of plugs in your hydroponics systems. Also in your kit, you should have about five different kinds of seeds. We send a variety of greens and herbs for your first crop, as these are easy to grow using hydroponics. You can experiment with any kind of seeds. We have a list of different plants that we have grown in our hydro systems at greenourplanet.org if you'd like to check it out. Any garden seeds will work in hydro systems. There are no special hydroponic seeds. The last thing you need for seed starting is some water or nutrient solution. Seeds will germinate just fine in plain water. However, if you'd like to get in the habit of making nutrient solution and to make sure your young plants get the nutrients they need quickly, you can sprout them in nutrient solution. Check out our video on mixing nutrient solution for more information. The first step in sprouting our seeds is to determine which seeds and how many. You have 200 planting plugs, which is enough to plant pretty much all of your systems. Your first time around, you may not be ready for all 200. For example, when you're planting the commercial system, which holds 216 total plants, plan to place plants in only about half of the planting holes to allow your plants plenty of space to grow. You can even space the plants farther apart, especially if you're planting something that grows large, like tomatoes or peppers. So just decide how many you want to plant and cut off the number of plugs you want. The rock wool cuts easily with scissors or a box cutter. A good teacher tip is that if you want to allow students to start the seeds, consider cutting the plugs into groups of several plugs that small groups or individuals can work with. It's best not to cut them into individual pieces if possible, just because it's hard to get them to stand up in the tray later. The second step is to make sure the planting holes are fully open. You can do this with a pencil. And then soak the planting plugs in either water or nutrient solution. So I'm going to soak my planting plugs in my water or nutrient solution. Make sure that they are completely saturated. The third step is to plant your seeds. To plant your seeds, simply place two to three seeds per planting plug, making sure they go down into the holes. There's no need to cover them. We plant one or two extra seeds because sometimes seeds don't germinate, and that way you'll likely have at least one seedling per plug. An easy way to organize this for students is to place a few seeds on a piece of paper on their desk, and then they can carefully drop the seeds into the plugs. The 
fourth step, once your seeds are planted, is to put them in the super sprouter. Arrange the planting plugs in the tray and use some type of marker, either a plastic tag or a popsicle stick, to designate different areas for the types of seeds you planted. Make sure there's a little water or nutrient solution in the bottom of the tray, about a fourth inch or so, so that the plugs will stay wet. If the seedlings dry out, they will die pretty quickly. Place the humidity dome over the top. It will help keep your seedlings moist and warm. You will notice there are vents on the top. You can keep these closed during germination, but once your seeds sprout, you should open them daily to allow for air exchange. You can also take the lid off from time to time. It's a good idea for these to be closed over the weekend when you may not be tending to the seedlings daily to be sure to retain the moisture. The fifth step is to place the light on top of the humidity dome. This can be left on 24 hours a day or on a 12 hours on, 12 hours off schedule. There are a couple of mechanical timers in your kit. You can use one of those if you'd like to set a 12-12 schedule. As the plants grow, just keep them warm and moist. This is a great time for students to observe the growth process up close. As the plants grow, they will see the first seed leaves, true leaves, and the development of the roots. They may see the seed coat clinging to one of the leaves. They may also notice the plants stretching toward the light, especially if there is a window nearby. Expect to place the seedlings into the hydroponic systems within about one to two weeks of planting. For information about transplanting, watch the transplanting tutorial in this series. If you have any questions during this process, consult your hydroponics manual, reach out to us at hydroponics at greenourplanet.org or contact your hydroponics coordinator.